Okay, so uh, we're asking uh, dumb uh, SEO questions. Uh, each week uh, we answer the questions asked on the uh, SEO questions community on Google+. Um, with us tonight we have uh, Alistair Lattimore. Uh, Alistair is Senior SEO Manager for the WhatEv group of companies. Uh, he's based here on the Gold Coast of Australia. Um, we have um, David Roseanne. David is uh, an SEO copywriter uh, and uh, spent, is it 25 years copywriting, David, and uh, 10 of them in SEO copywriting? Yeah, you're smiling, so I'm guessing I'm half right. One, uh, one two, three. Ah, I've got... I've got uh, i got sound, have I? Oh, thank God for that. Um, Thirty years of copywriting and uh, oh, about twelve of uh, going. Can you hear me? Cool, man. Yes, I, I we we can hear you fine. Um, and uh, David is is based uh, in the UK. Uh, also based in the UK is uh, Masataki Wasa. Uh, Masataki is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Uh, he's also a Google Top contributor on the AdSense and the Google Plus Help community. All right, um, so um, uh, each week, uh, as I said, we, we answer the, the, the questions um, asked uh, um, on um, the uh, SEA questions community. I'll just uh, share my desktop. The first um, question um, we have this week um, was from uh, Pablo Cano. Um, Pablo asked, hi everyone, a question for you all. Google does not read the hidden and personal comments uh, in HTML, right? Uh, he's referring to uh, text, which is com comment down. Yeah. Um, and, uh, uh, so somebody is giving me feedback, I'm sorry. Um, okay, so uh, he said, for example, something like this. And in it, uh, he, he, he writes uh, a, a couple of lines of code which can be seen on the SEO questions community on Google Plus or dumbseoquestions.com uh, on the question detail page. Um, but um, he, he uh, gives the code and asks that he's curious to know your thoughts. I've honestly never tested this before. Um, to bother, to be honest. Um, I would assume that they're going to see it, but I don't think it's going to have any impact. Um, that being said, um, Google will extract information out of a page um, and use it even in, in some instances where it's not necessarily obvious. For instance, if they see something that even remotely looks like a link um, within the page, for instance, it could be something within some JavaScript, for instance, that looks like it might be a link, often Google will try and crawl that to try and discover fresh content or new URLs within a site. Um, so given that they might try and extract something that might look like a link out of JavaScript, for instance, um, it seems reasonable to me that they might do similar sorts of things um, for some aspects of their crawling um, process in terms of, say, URL discovery. Does the stuff that's commented out help you from an, what's in the index? No, I don't think so. <laughs> And you should be able to see this yourself. Um, if you were to go and comment out a piece of code or a paragraph of text, wait for Google to index the page, and then you do the cache, colon, URL, and then a query for that specific page uh, with uh, a query term that was within the commented out text, I would assume the page wouldn't be returned from Google. So it would be something that you could test very easily. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 that, that certainly makes sense to me. Thanks, uh, Alistair. Um, anybody else on this one? Yeah. 
Um, from my point of view, I, I would be a bit worried that uh, uh, Google would be uh, thinking that we we were or, or I was trying to uh, gain them and put some hidden text uh, on the page. Um, I would be a bit concerned that uh, that I would be uh, hammered for that. Yeah, I think if that's I understand uh, what's going on. I think that's why you probably won't find it in the index, don't you? Think? I think it's reasonable mm, to yeah. it that they might use some aspects of the commented text um, for some parts of their process, maybe like URL discovery. But I'm pretty confident that text that was commented out um, isn't going to show up in the index. So, for instance, you wouldn't get done for hidden text because it's a comment. It's not designed for Google to actually index that content because it's a comment. Mm. Okay. All right. Well, let, let's uh, head on to number two, question number two on your run list. Uh, question number two um, is um, from um, Piper Lilly. Um, and Piper Lilly says, uh, uh, I used Weebly uh, to create my online store, but I'm not able to add alt text to the images within the store for whatever reason. It's, it's just not an option with Weebly. I can add alt text to all the other images that are on site, but not in store. My question is, how important is the alt text for my product images? Um, when I do those uh, uh, free analyzer site tools, they all come back saying that I have 200 plus images um, with no alt text. And last night, I spent three hours editing the images in Photoshop CS 5.1, <laughs> adding uh, file information to them, uh, and then relinked and uploaded all the new images. But that didn't seem to work because I'm getting the same results um, with the SEO analyzers. Thanks. So the short answer to this is it's really quite important. So the things Google uses um, from an image search standpoint that they've uh, spoken about in the past is uh, the file name for the actual image, um, the alt text that you specify attached to the image, and then any surrounding text on the page that surrounds or is nearby the image. So it's obviously quite common on a page for you to have uh, to inset a photo uh, within bodies of copy and they'll use the content uh, that's nearest to the image to try and understand potentially more about what is what the image is about. So by you not having um, alt text, you're removing one element, I suppose, of that for Google to understand what the image is about. Um, it would definitely be ideal if you could have alt uh, it, the alt text specified, but I suppose one thing to think about with this is depending on what type of store you're running, uh, is it practical or likely that your website might get returned for image search, for instance? You know, if you are in a competitive industry, um, there might be hundreds of other very strong, very well established websites whose images uh, are frequently returned, and despite you having or not having the alt text um, specified, it might not make a lot of difference to your site right now because it might be relatively new um, and having the text isn't actually still going to help you rank uh, because your site doesn't have enough strength. So I, I would have a look, bit of a look around inside image search to see um, whether that's relevant to your website or not. Um, if you think there's a good chance that you could rank because um, there's a lot of uh, lower strength websites that are ranking for your image queries, Maybe shoot the guys at Weebly an email and ask them if they plan on adding alt text um, as an option for their store images. Um, they would probably welcome the feedback. Yep. Thanks, Alistair. I've just noticed we've got an issue with the um, um, with the cameraman uh, app. Um, we should be. Um, uh, showing uh, the, you good-looking guys uh, on the large screen when you're speaking, but it's, it's, it's not doing that. 
Okay, uh, I'll see what I can do to fix that uh, in the meantime. Um, I'm going to guess that no can one I, else uh, can... You please no, do, I, right? <laughs> yes, right? Yeah, I, I'm going to not answer the question. Um, I'm just going to flag up that um, the problem that I see with uh, a lot of e-commerce sites is um, just having minimal um, content written content, uh, textual content, or taking um, a bit of stuff from the manufacturer's site or so on and so forth. Um, and if this is a more of a general, uh, what can I do to get my uh, e-commerce site ranking question, um, then um, put some proper, interesting, good quality uh, descriptions uh, on the product pages, don't just show the Wellington boot, um, talk about the Wellington boot, difficult it may be, but uh, that's what will help you. Okay, that's it. Thank you. All right. Um, uh, next, um, we have a question from uh, Paul Edmondson, magician. Um, it's titled, What is the best way to get uh, site links uh, without it being spammy? Uh, Paul says, I'm currently on page four of Google for Wedding Magician. I want to be on page one. Backlinks, I have been told, are key. Um, those in top have loads and high page authority. Uh, is the page authority deemed by the site links? Um, what is the best way to get these site links um, without being spammy? This has attracted a lot of uh, attention on the SEO questions community on, on Google Plus. Um, uh, I ended up with 13 um, responses. I think, um, so Paul's obviously a, a business, right? So the first thing I would be doing if I was Paul is making sure that his business is listed in all of the uh, business directories. So like the yellow pages of the world or Yelp or super pages, for instance, um, and making sure that all of his information is squeaky clean and accurate across all of those. Um, some of those will give him links, some might be followed, some might not be, that's okay. Um, it's good to have that sorted out for other reasons um, because it will help when someone does a search like um, magician in some town that Paul operates in, that will help his business listing and website show up for that sort of a query, so good to do. Then the other part of it is links from um, other websites, not, so not the business directories, uh, but other websites. Um, maybe you could find that there's um, niche magician style websites that you could get links from, um, you know, because maybe there's a, a worldwide magi magician's league that you're a member of. Maybe you need to be a licensed magician, I don't know. Or um, maybe some of the people that you perform whose weddings you perform at have got blogs. Um, and they might write about their amazing wedding um, and say that they had you perform at their wedding and they might give you a link. So start to think about the people that you interact with um, in terms of your work and whether or not you might be able to get links from some of those people as well uh, because that's the kind of thing that's nice and relevant. They're talking about your business anyway um, and uh, it'll be a good link. Thank you, Alistair. Um, does anybody else um, w want to add um, something for Paul Edmondson? All right, um, let, let's um, move on uh, to uh, question four on our run list. Um, this is a question from um, uh, Sammy Candlewall, um, and he's pointing out a, a, a webmaster error in structured data. Um, and, and it's one that I haven't heard before, a, a 444 error, and he wants to know uh, uh, how we can resolve um, that problem.
I meant to have a look at this um, to see. Uh, I, I see it. Um, Tony McCreek said, uh, technically they're not really errors as the spec says they are optional, but for peace of mind you can add max and min values via the meta tags. Go to schema.org and uh, look up um, reviews for um, details on the markup. What does he mean by that, uh, Alistair? Ah, Masataki is telling me um, that I'm an idiot. He's quite right. Um, uh, 444, 444 is the number of errors, not the error code. Sorry, I was talking with my microphone muted. I'm so smart. You can see that in the image, Jim. It says 444 items on 222 pages. Yeah. Um, in terms of what, why, um, in the tab um, that's highlighted, you can see uh, it's a little difficult. It says error type, missing colon, best or worst rating. So. What Tony's basically saying is that there's, in the definition for the rating schema, it either has a mandatory or optional, Tony says it's optional, um, where you need to specify the best or worst rating, and um, Sammy hasn't done that, which is why it's throwing back a warning. So presumably add that, the warning will go away. Um, if it is actually an optional in the way that Sammy's implemented it. It is interesting that um, it's coming back with a warning. Google's usually pretty good with, um, you know, obviously implementing the standard for things like this. You know, they're often uh, one of the bodies that helps define all of these standards that Google and other bodies use ultimately. So uh, it's uncommon, I think, that they do get it wrong. But, you know, easy to fix. Yeah, I see in the um, comments uh, left on the SEA questions community on Google Plus that uh, Sammy didn't understand what Tony said. Hopefully, uh, Sammy, um, from Alistair's answer, you'll now um, know which direction to head in. Moving on to question number five on our run list, uh, another one from Sammy. Um, what should I do to get uh, a site um, search box? Um, and um, he goes on to say, where is it? Um, um, he, he said, um, my site, best shops, spelt with a Z dot com, um, is also uh, like a, a site called Jabong, and he gives, he gives uh, on the SEO questions community, I saw um, a screenshot uh, of, of, of the um, result. So um, this is something that Google's only just kind of announced. There's actually a post on the Google Webmaster blog, you know, within the last month about what you need to do to implement this. Um, the short answer is you need to implement a piece of schema.org markup called search action, search action onto the home page, um, which links to your site search um, form, essentially, so that Google can see the schema.org markup. They know where the search form is effectively on your site in terms of what the URL is that they should send the user's query to. Um, if your site meets their quality guidelines, yada, 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 and you've implemented the markup correctly, um, then you can get the search box showing up in the search results. Um, one other thing that has come out recently as well that most people aren't aware of is um, Google is also triggering this search box to show up if you've got open search implemented. Um, I've mentioned this a couple weeks ago uh, on dumb messier questions because uh, 
some of our work sites have got the search box showing up. And we don't have the search action implemented. We have the open search implemented. Um, but, it, but Google's still detecting it and doing the right thing. So. Cool. All right, so um, let, let's now move on to question six on our run list from Uzma Asghar. Um, and um, um, Uz, Uzma uh, is, is asking a question about crawl errors. Uh, it says, uh, my website is generating brand name at, at the end of each URL. Um, and because of that, uh, Google Webmaster Tools is showing um, crawl errors. I'm using uh, HT Access to remove the crawl errors, um, but whenever I add a new post, the same error occurs, and, and the system uh, is, is creating uh, that um, URL again. Um, I'm sorry uh, I am posting the link to you just so that you all understand and let me know how to solve that. Um, and how to know, oh, yeah, that's right, was, okay, he gives the URL on, on the SEO questions community and then goes on to say every URL is ending with how to earn dollars um, and that is creating the problem. Uh, thanks in advance. So he's going to have an issue in... Uh, his template in WordPress, where one of the links in his site is linking to the post name, and then he's appending how to earn dollars on the end of it. So then every time he goes and creates a new post, it automatically creates a new broken link, uh, and then Google goes and crawls that link and gets a 404 error. So he should um, he should review his template and. Um, See what he can find. Thank you, Alistair. Um, I, actually, that's that's a, that's about it. All, all we need to answer this one, I think. I'm going to I'm going to say so anyway. Um, question seven on our run list um, is from Gopal Kumar, um, asking: Is it important to have particular elements on a web page to add schema for it? Um, I mean, I should have uh, practiced my reading before we started tonight. I can see that. Um, Gopal says, uh, "Hello, webmasters. Uh, I have a question regarding schema for the web page. Uh, is it important to have, have particular elements on the web page to add schema for it? Example: um, Suppose if I want to add schema for local business um, through the um, below Google tool, uh, what elements do I need in the content?" Uh, of the page, um, does content need name, address, etc., in the content, or can I add it manually? So, um, Kapal can go and check the schema.org website for the schema definition. So, for instance, local business, and um, it will tell him. Uh, which elements he needs to include on the page and what the markup looks like um, for that particular piece of schema. Um, there's a lot of elements within the schema that are optional, um, but there's, there'll be some in there that he really needs to link up so that Google can determine what's going on. But um, so, uh, very long time. Yep, fair enough. So, All right. Yeah, sorry, da go ahead, Alistair. I don't know. Um, just having a quick look at the um, the definition for it. So, you know, looking at it, it's got lots of local information to do with the business. So, he should mark up as many of the elements within the schema that he's got structured data for. So if he knows that the business has got a telephone number, a tax ID, a street address, 
you know, a number of people that work in the business, the types of payments that are accepted, cash, credit card, etc., opening hours. He should mark up as many of them as he can. Um, there's, there's no reason to, to not mark up, to the best of my knowledge, <laughs> as many of those elements as he can practically do. So I would go as hard as you can. Um, of course, make sure the information is correct, but go as hard as you can. Cool. Um, I'm sure that's good advice. All right. So, um, uh, next on our run list is from um, uh, Sam Stinston um, using JavaScript to, to manipulate outbound links. Um, is, that, is that SEO safe? Um, Sam says, uh, can anyone please comment on a new site traffic uh, um, building uh, web app, linksed.com. It uses JavaScript to manipulate to outbound, outbound links. Um, is it SEO safe? Uh, I, I saw its implementation on aha-now.com. Hmm. In the SEA questions community on Google Plus, uh, Mr. Young yeah, doesn't like it. I would. Um I don't think there's anything technically wrong with it. It's pushing dangerously close to being deceptive, um, in my opinion. Users clicking on a link don't expect to go to that link framed effectively within external site, you know, third-party website dot links link sed dot com. That that is not what customers or visitors are going to expect to have happen when they click an outbound link. So, yeah, is it wrong according to Google's guidelines? No. Um, you know, you're not changing the, the link itself to redirect to somewhere else so that you're sending off to a, a spam website or a porn website or a pharmacy site or something like that. So that aspect of it, I think, isn't bad. Uh, but behaviorally, I think it's a little grubby, really. Um, but maybe it works. You know, they've got a lot of big websites on their site saying that they're using it. Yeah. Try I, wonder, I wonder if they actually are using it, though. I mean, who's going to be able to contact those big websites and ask them? Well, you could click a link and find out, right? Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. As always, Alistair, you're a mile in front of me. Um, okay. Um, Masataki Wasa added something for question seven that, that we just covered. Uh, he said he likes to use uh, Yandex, uh, webmaster.yandex.com slash microtest XML uh, to check on schema. Okay, um, question nine uh, on, our, uh, on our run list we'll move to. Um, and uh, it's from a good friend of ours, German Rack. Uh, German asks, is there a human at Google um, to reach out to? Well, apparently there was one once, uh, German. Um, but... Um, Anyway, he says, I consider my customer reviews for my business uh, as a vital addition to my SEO work. Uh, I'm, I'm furious that Google has recently been removing some of my best reviews for no apparent reason. Does anyone here have any experience in dealing with this? Um, can I get them back? Uh, is there a human at, at Google to reach out to? And as always, thanks... Uh, in advance uh, for your advice 
Um, you guys rock. Um, and he mentions me, but of course, he, he, what he really means is that uh, you guys. Um, yeah, there's not much we can tell him, is there? Or, or, or do you guys have a hotline? No, I don't. Do you think it's algorithmic, Alistair, that this removal removal of reviews? Oh, I would think so. There must be you know, hundreds of thousands of reviews submitted daily um, across Google products. I can't imagine that they would be manually um, approving or denying them. Plus, you can can't can't you um you know report a review? as being spammy and things like that as well. <laughs> things like that probably play quite a role in pushing things up um, to get maybe manual attention as needed. Right. Okay, I, I see uh, Tim Kapper has just joined us. He's just obviously back from another mission from some far off place. <laughs> oh, Russia, I'm told, it's in the, in the chat. <laughs> okay. Yes, Jim, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, moving on from Jamin, right? I, I hope that uh, covers it for you, Jamin. Um, did you have anything to add, actually, Tim? This is an issue uh, you, you probably didn't hear the read of it, um, but it's um, a, a, about losing um, customer reviews. Do you have any clues on, on getting them back if Google takes them away? No. Um, a customer review would probably disappear uh, because it's been flagged in the person who left the reviews actual uh, account and they then have the opportunity to amend it more in line with Google's guidelines and then you can resubmit them again. So they don't just kind of disappear, what it has is Google's flagged it up in the person's own account who left the review and it's up to them to check those every now and again. Um, what the guidelines are, are is a bit ambiguous because I've left a couple of reviews um, which I've seen that have been flagged and you look at them and it just, wow, how, why, I don't know. <laughs> um, amend them slightly and then, they, then they're back. Um, so perhaps if this uh, Jarman, uh, I mean I don't know how if, if he remembers who actually left them, maybe reach out and say, you know, that wonderful review you left us has um, disappeared could you check in your in your in your um, account in your webmaster uh, sorry in your Google Plus account under reviews and, and and see what the case there is negative reviews you can actually respond in your business page you can respond to them and um, also if you feel it is unfair uh, I recently came up with one which was a negative review on a business site but then the review then actually recommended people going to a competitor down the road and it was like okay I think and I, I did flag that as spam it has been a week nothing has happened with it it's still there so um, early days and I don't know if it will be removed or put back to the person's account for moderation I'm not entirely sure it's still a bit iffy. Okay, fair enough. All right, um, let, let's move on now um, um, and I hope that answers it for you, Jamin. Um, let's move on now to a question from Alex Sam. I hope you guys have got your ears on because uh, I, I have no idea what th th this is about. Um, Alex asks uh, a question on GTM and e-commerce tracking code. 
said, I, I've submitted my e-commerce website uh, with the, the below mentioned code used in Tag Manager, but some product values are partially tracked. The co is the code correct or not? Um, could you kindly check and update with the correct code? Um, well, look, yeah, it, it, I, I don't know if we are able to update the correct code, uh, uh, Alex, but if we are, um, you'll probably find it on the question detail page um, on dummyseoquestions.com. Um, he, he, he actually puts the block of code there um, and uh, says the, the, the tag GTMM rules code given below mentioned for your reference. So um, I haven't implemented this myself um, yet. So, but at a quick glance, um, one thing I can see is out of place. The quantity value doesn't have quotes around it. All of the other numbers or values have all got double quotes to make them strings. So that's something that I would check. Uh, the second thing I would check is to make sure that his product names and SKUs um, are escaped. So for instance, if he's got any product names or things like that with strange characters in them, that might trip up the data layer. Um, so it would be worth checking to see if the products that people have purchased have got funny characters in them that might be causing, the, when the JavaScript uh, tag manager fires, it can't get to the bottom of the um, transaction products um, array to get all of the data out of that particular product. And that's what's resulting in partially tracked, um, uh, partially tracked transactions. Yep. All right. Anybody else? Alex, Sam, I, I hope um, that covers it for you. Um, question eleven uh, on our run list uh, is from. Uh, Ian McLeod. Uh, Ian is a good friend of uh, SEO Questions. Uh, um, he's looking for ideas uh, to get traffic back to our website. Uh, Ian goes on to say, uh, hi everyone and thanks for providing this community. You're welcome. Um, he said, I'm considering leveraging some free content on our website in the form of downloadable MS Word and PDF documents in exchange for some, some other thing of value to us. Um, value to us would, would be one, uh, social recommendations on Google, LinkedIn or Facebook, um, following our Google Plus pages and sharing content with others, backlinks to our site, um, next would be joining our regular newsletter and updates, and finally uh, providing contact information to go into an, an email marketing campaign. We will also include links in the free material as a reminder to people of what we do and how we might assist them at some other stage. I'm looking for ideas to get the most bang for our buck in terms of SEO value and traffic back to our website. Would um, all of those things be kosher? Well, I mean, would, would they they all be acceptable? Then not not in con contravention of any of the guidelines. Um, well, theoretically, he shouldn't be asking for backlinks. I suppose you you could argue that maybe he's buying those by giving away a free asset. That would be kind of like gifting someone a digital camera in response for a review, maybe, with a link. I don't know. <laughs> um, I think the reality is it's unlikely to cause him any problems. Um, so 
So the things that could help him would be anything that he can get on um, third-party websites that ultimately send him traffic or send him links or send him citations if he's a local business. So um, if he's got images, for instance, that he gives to people, um, they could link back to him as the source of that resource. Um, he could make the things that they download um, available as an embeddable object. For instance, some of the um, PDF uh, content you can host inside um, different web web apps and then provide them as an embeddable resource like you can see with, um, you know, like a slide share slide deck, for instance. You can do that with PDFs, for instance. Things like that he might be able to use to get links back to his site. Um, could he do widgets, for instance? Um, that might be interesting. Um, I think the social stuff is definitely good. Um, subscribing to their you know, email newsletter would be good. Um, if it's something that he's got to sell, finding ways to leverage the people that's subscribing to his um, product, service, or whatever, in terms of uh, word of mouth referrals. You know, I would consider looking at something like a referral program, an affiliate program type thing. Um, there's a whole raft of um, really cheap uh, affiliate products available on the market, like um, a great one I saw ages ago that I thought looked pretty, pretty swish was um, Has Offers, I think it's called, that looked pretty swish. I stumbled onto one last week called um, Ambassador or something like that. Um, and I'm now getting retargeted to death, which is good work from there. <laughs> um, but have a look around for things like that where you know you can use the traffic or the business and the people that you're already transacting with to get even more out of them in some way. Because you know if you've got a good product, um, then people are probably quite happy to talk about your product and refer it. Um, maybe you could ask for some testimonials on, you know, your best customers' websites. Like, you know, you might have a great rapport with um, a dozen or 20 different clients who you've emailed quite a bit, they've offered you product feedback, or they're repeat customers, they've purchased from you quite a few times, they might have referred customers to you, etc. Reach out to them and see if they'll write a testimonial or a review or something like that for you on their website. Um, if they've got a personal blog or a business blog, something like that. Or um, if they're a business and they've got a Google Plus account, um, businesses can review businesses now, right, in the local reviews. Maybe they would be prepared to review your business inside Google Plus as a business as opposed to an individual. It might be something else that's kind of nifty. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of things, I suppose. Yeah, there certainly are. Um, anybody else? By the way, guys, uh, we just clicked over 200,000 minutes or 200,000 viewed minutes uh, of dumb SEO questions. Um, and, and it's a bit of a milestone. I, I can't imagine who's been watching for 200,000 minutes. Um, but it's, 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 a lot of, um, it's a lot of time anyway. Um, all right. Um, an extra message in the chat. What was that? Oh, thanks, Tim. Whoop, whoop. Okay. No, good. <laughs> So All right. Like half, hmm? Pardon? That's like half a year, is it? A bit less than half a year. Look, I, 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 I normally check. I normally calculate that, but I didn't this time. The, the reason I didn't to, to, to get our minutes now, uh, because now we have um, three uh, accounts on YouTube. We've got. Um, um, the dumb SEO questions um, uh, one for audio only files. Uh, that was a failed experiment that um, um, 
but it's, it's still uh, uh, maybe it's not so failed. Maybe I, sh I should um, um, go and do the rest. But I started to uh, make audio only files and, and, and put them on YouTube. And we've also got um, our audio only files on SoundCloud, of course. Um, but um, um, and I started and it, it just didn't seem. Um, it, it takes about three days to do one by the time I download, change it, and then and, and upload. I'm not actually doing it all the time, but that's how long it takes. So, uh, okay, I'm, I'm rambling, um, but uh, we, we now have uh, another uh, um, account um, so that all of our Hangouts from now on are 15 people, uh, 15 seats available rather than 10. Um, and then I have to download from there and, and put it up onto that normal channel. But anyway, I, I was I, I thought, gee, that, that's pretty close to 200,000 added in the uh, other channel, and, and there we are, uh, well over the 200,000 mark. Whew. Um, okay. So, I, Ian McLeod, I hope um, that's uh, prove that will prove useful to you. Uh, here we have a question from uh, John uh, Pilcher. Um, for your internal menu structure, should you use anchor text? Um, or, or could this change your site? He said, for, for my web design site, I have a top menu item, areas, and eight uh, sub-menu items for the local surrounding towns. Um, web design town A equals uh, home page. Web design town B Web Design Town C, etc. Um, the old title tags also contain those key, these keywords, often with a few non-keywords as well. Uh, is this likely to damage my site? Also, for completeness, I have put Web Design Town A in, uh, even though this is my home page. Uh, oh, in, even though this is my home page. Um, is that likely to damage my home page? Uh, feedback uh, would be appreciated. Attracted uh, five answers on, on the uh, WCA, uh, sorry, the SEO questions community on Google Bus. So I think in small volumes, this is not going to hurt. You know, so if it is literally only half a dozen, then you'll get away with it. It's not going to hurt anything. If you were to get greedy with this and do it 50 times or 100 times, for instance, um, the likelihood of being able to put out uh, 100 towns that surround your business with what's going to amount to be basically identical content and get away with it is probably going to be short-lived and you know it's the kind of thing for instance that uh, the next monthly um, panda algorithm update you know that happens roughly every 30 days is probably would probably uh, be interested in dinging you for so I think I wouldn't go too hard but you know half a dozen whatever I don't think it's going to hurt too much Okay, anybody else? All right, uh, John Pitcher, I, I hope um, you are pleased with that. Um, Monty, actually answer John's question. <laughs> um, that say it again? I just realized I didn't actually answer John's question. He said, uh -huh. for your internal menu structure, should you use anchor text? Yes, use anchor text. That's fine. Um, it's not going to hurt anything. The question really you should be asking yourself was what I kind of pointed out. Is having 6 or 10 or 50 or 500 basically identical town pages that you're targeting for search a good or a bad thing? In small volumes, you'll get away with it. If you push this 
tactic too hard. It's the kind of thing that could get you penalised. Excellent. Thanks, Ryan. Um, here we have a question from Manzir Taha. Um, he says, hi, I thought there is a relation between Google Webmaster Tools and the site uh, colon operator. Um, both should share the index pages, but it's not in our cases. In our case, in Google Webmaster Tools, it shows uh, as the attached image um, 25,000 pages indexed. But when I use the Google Site Operator, I get um, your search site um, did not match any documents. Um, for all other languages, e.g. Uh, islamgar.info slash en, we might get these links um, disabled, uh, but everything is okay. Um, and just the Ara Ara Arabic language uh, has this problem. Other search engines like Bing and DuckDuckGo um, show the correct results. Uh, any hints are uh, greatly appreciated. Um, so probably the first thing is the site operator from Google is um, not accurate and Google have openly stated this over and over and over again um, and you shouldn't really use it from an accounting standpoint. Uh, if you wanted to better understand your content indexation, I would submit a XML sitemap for each of the languages in your site. So one for English, one for Arabic, one for Russian, one for Japanese, etc. And then in Google Webmaster Tools, it will tell you how many URLs within each of your XML sitemaps are actually indexed that you've submitted. Um, that's going to be a far better uh, tool for you to use. Sorry guys, I was muted. Um, anybody else? Right. Uh, yes, it, it's amazing how many um, things from Google uh, make you think that they, that, that they might um, be, be valid. I mean, of course, the, the uh, site operator returns a number. Um, but see, even that number, they don't even give you. If you start to scroll through the pages, uh, um, the number actually changes. Um, all right, um, moving on to question number 14 on our run list from Stephen Sicantelli, who runs a, a Bracti taxi uh, in Florida. Um, he says, I'm on top, what to do next? Um, but we're very, very glad to hear that, uh, Stephen Sicantelli. Um, <laughs> and um, uh, also we should um, mention Ian Wortley, who as a Christmas present, um, set Stephen up um, with a new site. Um, I actually, was near near the beginning of um, the SEO questions community that uh, Stephen came along, and um, it, it, it's really heartwarming that um, another member of the community uh, built his site for him, and now his uh, web page is number one in local search, uh, and he wants to know what to do next. Well, if he's only there in local, the next challenge is to get the number one organic, not the, not the number one local business listing. So, you know, if, he, if Stephen doesn't have uh, both number one positions, then there's more work to be done. <laughs> I think he needs to find some more key phrases to get uh, to the top four. He's only there for, say, his business name. Well, he needs to do something a little bit more challenging, perhaps. Mm. 
What's um, what's Stephen's business again? He's a taxi operator. So he is kind of essentially local. So uh, yeah. Potentially expanding out your your services in terms of things like um, I don't know what what's really around you, Stephen, but potentially expanding it out in terms of like um, airports. So, is there a um, you know a, a major airport near you that you do a lot of runs to? Perhaps expanding that out. So. Uh, let's just say, for example, you're in Chicago or whatever, so it's O'Hare in Chicago, isn't it? Yeah, whatever. Um, you know, maybe expanding it out, looking at uh, very profitable runs that you do and expanding it out into that local direction then. That's uh, a thought. Yeah. Yep. Okay, uh, moving right along, uh, if I can get my tired old eyes to focus. Heavens above, um, we, we, it looks like we've covered our um, questions this week. I thought we had 20, but um, apparently we've only got 15. Um, actually, um, um, no, I'm wrong. I, I apologise. I, 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 do, I do have one left. All right, this is a question from Mike Cook. Um, he says, I have a question on a website that I'm working on rankings that are going up quite nicely on generic terms um, and, and some quite difficult ones. However, a local term is, is struggling solicitors Preston Keep. A struggling solicitors press and keeps hanging on position 43 uh, and should be in the top 10. I, I was hoping for some suggestions and I, I'm giving the site uh, a bit of a refresh. Um, the site is www.phc-law.com. Uh, I have a plan in place but I'm not convinced uh, that, that I haven't missed anything. So the term is um, solicit solicitors solicitors uh, Preston. I imagine uh, he won't be um, wanting to be searching for uh, struggling solicitors in Preston, as I read in my bad read then. Anybody at all uh, can answer this, you know. Well, there's no need to fight over it. <laughs> we've uh, we've looked at this site for Mike before, I think, haven't we? Well, we certainly had chats with Mike before, but I'm not sure if, if, if it's just... <laughs> Sorry, Jim, what's the URL? I'm not logged into the... Um... All oh, right. Um, okay, I'll I'll give you the URL. Law. I haven't logged in. Law.com. Yeah, I'll just take the dot, the dot out of it, man. And it's in the chat. Uh, 
Um, well, there's a, a couple of things here. Um, That obviously, you know, uh, just just quickly looking at, you know, what, what what the site is. It's personal injury solicitors in your title. You've got personal injury and accidents claim solicitors Preston in your title. Quick search claim solicitors Preston. You're number two. Um, so that has worked. Now you want to just take it down to solicitors Preston. Um, well, you, your title and your things about your sites is saying that you are claim solicitors. Uh, so, you know, Google has uh, got that right. Um, so, so we kind of need to reinforce this as solicitors in Preston also. Uh, A uh, couple of things that we can do to start uh, getting this uh, into. Obviously, uh, we don't. Uh, hang on. Right, we've got your address. Um, in the bottom there, uh, 107. Okay. Uh, does that trans? Does, is that the whole footer? Does that go across to all pages? Let me just quickly look. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> uh, one thing I would do also is just separate out your, your titles on each page a bit better. Um, I've just clicked on your About Us page, and it's same again, Personal Injury and Accident Lawyer, Solicitors, Preston, Lancashire. Uh, I would just look at the titles of your pages, just for a user, uh, user benefit, um, especially in search. Um, just, just another thing, quick off the top of my head. You've, you've uh, got ample space in your header. You've got, you know, your telephone number, open Monday to Friday, email at. You've got ample space in to to add your address. Aesthetically, I, th I don't think it'll detract too much if you just add it in your address, um, and it makes sense. You've given all your other details in the header anyway. That, that could just help reinforce uh, specifically where you are. Um, One thing I'm noticing is um, his Google Plus listing is different. So the address is the same, 107 Gar Stang Road, Preston, Lancashire, whatever it is. His name in Google Plus is Personal Injury Solicitors in Preston, Pine, Vertical Bar, PHC Law Limited, which is wrong. So that's not his business name. So he should fix that. His phone number listed in Google Plus is plus four four eight hundred six one two seven six one two, which is not the phone number listed in the footer of his website either. For which, correct me if I'm wrong. I assume O one double seven two three zero eight zero seven zero is a phone number, Tim. Yeah. Yeah, it has got different numbers. So the information he lists in his footer for his address and phone number, 
they need to match his official information in Google+. Plus. Um, so he needs to update his Google Plus business name to be PHC Law. And it needs to, um, and his website needs to match the same phone number. Okay, uh, anybody else on this last question for the evening? All right, so um, uh, let's move on uh, to our news section. Um, after the questions are asked on, on uh, our weekly uh, Hangout on Air, um, we um, go to our SEO news community um, and um, pick up any news items that have popped up. Uh, over the previous seven days. And um, this week um, we have five uh, items which um, uh, uh, which were placed. Um, the first one was placed by uh, Edwin Yonk on uh, um, a post from Google on more direct answers uh, on the search engine results pages. Um, he says, uh, earlier this year, we, we say step-by-step -step instructions that weren't connected to any schema markup. One, and now there are structured snippets that uh, don't need any schema markup. Um, my guess are both, that both are somewhat connected. Um, okay, I'm not sure if that was said by... Uh, Edwin Yonk, um, or by Barry Schwartz. Um, but uh, anyway, guys, uh, it's a little bit above me. Um, would you like to address this? I didn't get a chance to read it yet. Okay. I think it's an interesting move. You know, it's more of the whole, you know, just relentless drive from Google to steal people's content. You know, Google obviously keeps saying, uh, you know, it's not hurting publishers, but that's just a load of horseshit. I just refuse to believe it that when, for instance, they go and take weather information and put weather information at the top of the SERPs when you do a search for London weather, that a weather website that was ranking and getting loads of traffic um, and supporting their business and employees of advertising sales isn't suffering because Google have put this weather information into the SERPs. This is another example. You look at the less ag aggressive things like um, when Moz got ac they published some stuff a little while ago where you do a search for meta tags or something like that and a one box shows up with information from Moz's domain directly into the SERPs. And at least at that stage, I think Cyrus Shepard said that it hasn't had that much impact yet, or Dr. Pete, maybe, someone. But that's a, that's a softer type of an example. Maybe this is a little bit like that. It's not quite as aggressive. But hard pushes from Google where they go and take things like weather is um, it's pretty it's a pr it's pretty stiff I think like it, it's there's no denying it that it's good for users users love it but it's not good for publishers I, yeah I totally 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 agree um, and um, the thing is that um, uh, eventually. Um, I mean, if, if Google keeps um, um, starving the, the, the channel of revenue, eventually the, the, the thin crust of quality, which is on top of um, you know, a, a world of steaming rubbish, um, that, that thin crust um, will get um, worn away and uh, Google um, you know, will end up um, with... Um, 
Uh, let, let's just say that um, Google sends this uh, your your website example, Alistair, the, the, the weather the weather weather uh, thing. So Google sends them broke, um, and then um, Google is left to work, find another. But what what happens when they run out of weather stations? Um, I suppose weather is one thing that they can pull in the data themselves if they want. Um, but th th there must be many examples like that where, where once people say, "Look, there's no point doing this because you know because uh, Google will will, t will take the traffic." Um, what's Google going to do then? I think perhaps the the issue here is how complete the um, the information is. If it's something like uh, weather. That's it. You need to know whether it's raining or going to rain and what the temperature is going to be and so on and so forth. However, um, something like the making French toast, there are other questions here, which are how many, uh, how much milk, how many eggs, how much sugar and vanilla, how many slices will this make, and even how many people will it feed. So I may well click through to Indestructibles, or Instructables, sorry, not Indestructibles, Instructables, and have a look and find out some more. So, next question, I guess, is how much control do we have over these step-by-steps and what goes into them? Because if you have control over the way you set them up, you could use these as teasers. Just a thought. Yeah. Um, anybody else? If we, if we do get a comment from you, Tim, I want to see some hand waving. It's been a while since we've had some hand waving. <laughs> Where's Rob Wagner when we need him? Uh, we could rile him up in a heartbeat. <laughs> By the way, I, I just figured out how to get our camera to, to, to move off. The show is nearly over, but um, I didn't learn how to do that much anyway. Um, i got to fly yeah. anyway before you crack on, so I'll leave you tonight. Alistair, th thanks very much for, for, for coming along tonight and um, um, I can only say anchoring. Um, Tim was away on some special op somewhere. Um, and, uh, yeah. um, immensely grateful. Thank you very, very much. That's okay. We'll talk to you next week, guys. See ya. Okay. See you, buddy. Hmm. Um, I suppose we'll go on to our second, uh, our second news item, guys. Second uh, news item is. Um, uh, also posted by uh, Edwin Yonk, uh, the beginning of the end of keywords. Well, um, it's a, a rash statement. Um, the article is based on Search Metrics uh, uh, Ranking Factor 2014 by Marcus Tober. He describes the fall of keywords, namely, uh, uh, first, the decrease of the features keyword in URL and keyword in domain. Um, as one of the more obvious findings uh, of our analysis. Um, and second, um, um, relatively few sites uh, have actually have the keywords uh, in their headings. Jesus, uh, I mean, how, how is Googlebot doing this? Um, anyway, uh, it goes on to say, in fact, only about 10% of the URLs in position 1 to 30 have the keyword uh, in H2s, uh, 15%, uh, have them in H H1s, uh, and the trend also is negative, meaning that the trend for keywords in H1s and H2s is dropping. Third, uh, although the feature 
backlinks uh, with keyword has considerably increased from 2013 to 2014, the share continuously decreases with each position. In contrast to last year's curve, um, this results in the calculation of, of a higher positive correlation, um, meaning that the correlation between the keywords in backlinks and ranking is lower today. And he continues with anal an analysis of where the, the, the fall in, in, search, in the search power of keywords went. Um, namely, he continues um, with the rise of content. Well, that's a bit to um, speak on. No comment on, on, on this um, most significant article? I I wonder quite what he's talking about, to be blunt. Um, topics and keywords. Um, yeah, you can actually um, define them as something different, but uh, your keywords tend to define the topic, and the, the keywords tend to fall out of the topic. So... Um, yeah, it's, um, as you said earlier, Jim, how, how is Google determining what these pages are about? Um, I suspect that uh, those keywords are rather nicely used in, in the content rather than just stuck um, in a, an H1. I, it, it's... I think I'd have to read the full report, but I have a feeling it's a bit, bit like um, eating uh, rotten bananas uh, stops you getting cancer headlines. Yeah, but that would have been also within, like, that kind of context would have also been categorized in a medical category within whoever like whether it be in a newspaper or whoever printed it. So I think, I think you know, a good way to kind of get an idea of this on how um, Google is seeing your site is if you go into your webmaster tools and you look under, under the keyword content, you'll be very surprised at to what words Google is equating to your site and it will kind of just give you a kind of like rough basic sort of little idea on on where your site and how your site is being perceived and it's not just about H1s and H2s and it's about what content is within your site um, how it also gives you variations. Now, that, that that part of Webmaster Tools could be so much more expanded, um, but on a on a very base thing is if you look at that, you will see keywords and variations of keywords that Google is equating to your site, and it is very very interesting. And by looking at that, if you you get an idea of your site and you get an idea of how your site's being perceived and what you think you're trying to do compared to how Google's perceiving it are two different bloody things. Um, so worth taking a look and you know every couple of months check in there and see how you are improving on those because it's a good base, it's a really good base to, to get an idea. Yes, that, that's, uh, I'll go along with that. It's, I've got some really yeah. bizarre things in mind. I, I just, stuff that I cannot find on my site. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you get like a random word and it just like, uh, it could be so much better because it gives you, I think it gives you 20, does it? Is it 20 or something like that? Something like that. Or is it 50? But anyway. And you get to the point and you look at this and think, where have I ever mentioned that? And you start yeah. trawling the site. And you eventually find this one freaking random word which is like, what? You know, and 
but Google's picked it up, and this is how. And I mean, I don't know how and how accurate these are, but you know, it's it's just a good idea. And looking at it, and it, it's you know, you can you can kind of start seeing the brain behind all the semantic schmantic going on there. You know, you can start getting an idea of of how things are all working together in one big sort of gloopy semantic mess, and 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 it's a a kind of you know, I, I'm still trying to get my head around all of it, you know, but it's it's just a way of focusing it and sort of channeling it into a more refined mess. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Google is a mess dot com. <laughs> yeah. Masataki, where are you, man? I'm here on the road. Oh, oh, there. Well, what, what, what do you think? Yeah. Any, any, any thoughts? The fall of keywords. Yeah, I suppose it's to do with the um, semantic search, broadly speaking. In the, in that Google is now starting to understand, if you like, the idea of what people are asking for, that can be expressed in various different ways. So you might type in something trying to find an answer to something. You express it in your own words. The answers might be given by different people in different manner, using different sets of words, but answering the, if you like, that thing that you were asking. So to that extent, I think it is um, happening that you, know, you cannot now say, OK, I can express this idea, this um, thing, in certain words, and I'd rank for that. Um, and then, you know, obviously, the the reverse side of that coin was that, you know, if you didn't have these different words that explains the same thing in different ways, then you wouldn't have ranked. So now it's sort of flipped around a bit, and uh, it is about how clearly and how well you can express that thing that you're trying to express the idea behind it. It's not expression now anymore that's crucial, expressed in mm. keywords. It's not expression now, it's the idea, it's the fundamental, if you like, content that matters. Yeah, yeah, and you, you, you know, actually I, I was looking at this morning, um, looking at an AdWords account with, um, uh, with a client and Checking, checking, you know the 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 keywords that were searched and uh, or that the ad was displayed for, and there's some completely bizarre, you know, sentences that people are searching for, um, which don't appear in the keyword tool itself when you search around that. Um, but they certainly being searched because you paid for a bloody click on that, <laughs> and um, you can kind of see, and you can kind of, you can kind of see how uh, the the search is evolving, where people are no longer just typing in lawyer, Preston or whatever, they're actually diving down, you know, and people are getting more and more in tune with finding things in search and actually expanding things and not and not feeling limited to searching for the most odd uh, phrases <laughs> and sentences out there and yeah you know we just it's 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 and also how google is equating your site and your content to all this very interesting time we're in now very interesting time yeah so for example if you and then part of it is voice search, isn't it? That you're um, asking questions um, by speaking rather than typing or writing. So let's go back to the lawyer example. In the, if I say, um, for example, if I say, how do I make a claim? Now, obviously, that's slightly unclear what claim you're trying to make. But let's assume that from the pers from the past searches and uh, questions that you're looking to make a claim against someone because you slipped on a wet floor. 
at your local supermarket. That's a personal injury case. You don't have to say, how do I find a personal injury case lawyer? But if you say, on the basis that there is context to it, that you slipped in the supermarket, you weren't happy with how it dealt with your um, complaint at the location, um, you had to go to hospital, you, know, you want to make a claim. And then you might go on Google using the voice command and saying, look, how do I make a claim against supermarket? Then if Google can understand that query correctly in the context, then they might highlight personally injury lawyers. as response. But you haven't uttered any Talking of these about, words. Yeah, you've just given me some, I'm going to act, you've just given me, yeah, I'm going to do a little bit of research into, you know, because I've just looked at mobile search and that, and you know uh, their ads, all of them, people go Google, they start with Google. <laughs> I want to, or find me, or search. So those are the kind of three phrases that, that I want a search for, you know, search, and then the keyword. Uh, I want to just do a little bit of digging about, actually, in terms of what is displayed with voice search. But, yeah, and it, uh, yeah, um, it's going to it's going to be very interesting, very interesting, and in how you can kind of tap into that voice search in terms of real, real, um, you know, voice sort of voice kind of the, the way people are searching rather than uh, writing. It is yeah, it's really interesting. And of course, well, most I'm people gonna... carry their mobile devices, so there's location oh. data stored. So. You know, they, Google would know where you have been, what you were likely to be doing, while yeah. you're and about. So that's a lot of information, and a lot yeah. of things that they can target, both ads and search results. You know, of course, these are two completely separate things, but you know, directions are the same, in that it's going to be highly personalized, and in a sense that the fuzzy queries are going to be answered quite concretely because you know people ask things in relatively general terms even though what they want in most cases is a concrete answer that is specific to their needs and requirements expressed in a very general terms so it's going to be interesting so in that whole process, keywords and looking at keywords, that the importance of that is going to decline steadily, and I don't think there's any doubt of that. The question is how quickly that changes, how fundamentally that changes, and how then that changes how you deal with that situation. That's tricky. How do you see it affecting SEO copywriting, David? That's known as um, putting the SEO copywriter on the line. Um, as I say, I, I think the I think the the question is I, I've always seen um, content writing as being more than just looking at individual keywords. This, this idea that there is a, a spread, a topic spread, if you like, around a key keyword, um, that the question, I guess, in my mind, is understanding how Google, how, how far Google spreads its, uh, its filter, if you like. What, how does it, um, does it include, uh, well, what does it include? Um, how how effective is it making um, is it at making um, 
associations. Um, is this is this page better about a given um, a given topic than that page? Um, so yeah, um, it it could it could turn into an absolute train crash. Um, in as much as um, Google's um, the quality of Google's um, search results just take a nosedive. Um, yes, that was a good waffle. The the uh, I think the uh, I think the answer to this is um, I'm sitting on the uh, sitting on the sidelines, seeing if this really does make um, a lot of difference, uh, and if so, how. Um, my experiences, my experience are not as clear cut as that report um, seems to say, and that's why I was saying um, about the uh, the green bananas causing um, causing cancer or whatever it was I said earlier. Um, you know, it's it's a headline. What actually? What's the meat of the uh, the report say? Um, you know, I still I, I'm loath to throw keywords away as a as a tool because it's still uh, it's still related to what people search on. If you go in and research these, if you go on, go and research what people are searching on, what they're doing, oh, they're using these things called keywords and key phrases. So it's kind of implicit, um, although um, although Google has made the implicitness more hazy or less defined. End of monologue, end of thoughts for the day. Um, come back in a few months time and see if I've come to any conclusions. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting question, isn't it? You know, if Google gets it wrong, then they might get it wrong by a far bigger margin than it currently does. And another interesting thing is that have we users, searchers, you know, if we go to Google, been trained to look for keywords now? Because that's how it how it's worked. So when we want information, then we have trained ourselves to look for certain keywords. But now Google is going away from that and trying to understand the intent of the question far better expressed in normal conversational style. So there's going to be sort of disparity in that. And I think the fundamental disparity will exist between the written queries and the spoken queries. Because that's, I think, quite natural in the sense that how we speak is not how we write. Yep. Well, it's certainly going to be uh, interesting times ahead, um, and um, uh, directions to head in will have to be considered carefully. <laughs> well, that's that's me anyway. Um, all right, so let's uh, move on to question number eighteen on your run list. Um, it, it's um, on Knowledge Vault and incorrect data. Um, Bill Slosky uh, followed the breadcrumb trail left in, in the Knowledge Vault paper, namely uh, one of the authors appeared in a patent. Uh, the main problem this patent tries to solve is uh, identify data in a knowledge graph that is outdated, incorrect, incomplete or otherwise not satisfactory to a user. And uh, Googlebot tries to identify correct, outdated, and or incomplete data with user behaviour, um, query space, which is called a query record. If, if users keep on searching for further information after they receive uh, the information from the knowledge graph, that's a sign that the knowledge graph information may be incomplete or correct. Um, that seems logical to me. Um, why do they need a patent for it? Oh, that's right. 
Um, Bill Slowski said to Edwin Young, yeah, thanks for, for uh, sharing his article. Um, he said he was trying to fill in some of the gaps and mysteries in the paper. One of the problems identified in the Knowledge Vault paper appeared to be incomplete and incorrect uh, information. So I wanted to see how that might be addressed. All right. Um, anybody else? Or at least anybody? Sorry for putting you on the spot before, David. It, it, um, as you know, normally I don't. It's just that uh, it was um, just a perfect question for you. Now you're still on mute. Yes, good. Yeah, that's that's fine. Um, I, I the, the whole question of, uh, of semantic search, hummingbird, natural language search, and keywords, key phrases is uh, is difficult um, because, as usual, no one has a clue really what. Google is up to, so um, you just have to look and see what's and see what happens. But um, I, uh, yeah, that's that's fine. Um, it's it's gave me a chance to to shape some thoughts. Cool. One one thing I have found um, with these hangouts, I, I I never never have a week go by where I don't learn something new. Oh yes, right. I, I have that. <laughs> um, yes, it, it's called Alistair commenting. I think you know, just start Alistair commenting. End of all completely new. <laughs> yeah. he, he is he, Al Alistair is a, is a gem, isn't he? Um, <laughs> um, okay. Um, have we covered uh, this one? Question um, um, eighteen. Um, well, I think I think those who might be able to make um, sensible comment are probably sloped off by now. Um, and Tim is hiding under the pretense that uh, he needs coffee. So um, I think I think we probably don't have the right undersigns here. Yeah, true enough. All right. Uh, well, look. Um, here, here is um, question uh, number nineteen. Now, this was um, interesting. Um, I mean, we all hate those private blog ne networks, which are just obvious, just garbage, uh, um, all linked together, uh, and then linking to the, um, the spammers' site. Um, and yet, um, they, they uh, continue to work. But it looks like Google nailed uh, some of them. Um, and uh, the, anyway, it seems that Google did, did um, pull up some of the private blog networks. And there were people who added themselves on Twitter and uh, inbound.org and, and, and pointed out where they got hit. Um, and. Um, it's certainly been uh, um, an interesting week. Um, yeah, um, anybody else? Edwin Young goes on to say uh, it, it's the um, networks aren't really. Uh, that private and, and, and mainly uh, controlled by one publisher. Normally they buy expired domains, but it is not uncommon to find them on WordPress.com and other free uh, blogging services. Um, and Mr. Young, um, this was a, a risky strategy. We're dealing with the last question, Tim, on the um, news items. Yeah. Um what what I found, okay, I mean, uh, you know, PBNs. What I found very interesting on some of the articles that uh, where they've, uh, you know, come clean, or some some of the sites that have, you know, come clean and said, yeah, I got hit. Um, 
was very interesting in the analysis was that um, it, it it this is very uh, uh, this was more than just an algo kind of thing. There was a lot of manual work involved in tracking down this because um, they also looked at um, you know a lot of it was linked to who is information sites that people had and you must remember a lot of these are kind of money sites so so people might have 10 20 of these um, and the one in the one instance let's say you know he had five where he had used uh, you know uh, PBNs and five which he was still building on and not yet Working with or, or or you know using PBNs as for links, um, they were all all nailed, um, and a lot of them have come to the conclusion that it's uh, there was who is involved in this. Another very interesting thing was that uh, you need. To, I've got someone at the door. Another interesting thing was that the unlike my my blog guest where spam penalties were issued, this was thin content issued now. How they're going to get out of that one without some serious work? Anyway, so, oh, sorry, I was, I was muted. Does anybody want to fill in while we're waiting for Tim to return? One thing I thought was uh, most interesting on Google Plus today, Richard Hearn pointed out that um, um, if, if this is now working, um, private blog networks uh, are being penalised, um, then um, why not negative SEO, that people could buy expired domains, point them to the, the, their uh, competitor's site and, and just wait um, for them to be... Um, uh, and blown out of the water. Okay. Well, I, I think um, let, let's make this a wrap uh, for um, yet uh, another week. Um, we're um, um, going to uh, close the broadcast now. I'll put a link um, in the WCA Questions community. Um, so uh, if you'd like to join us, um, you're more than welcome. Um, and I'd like to thank um, if, if anybody that's still uh, watching at this point. Um, your your uh, uh, participation makes what we do uh, worthwhile. Uh, we thank you for it and uh, uh, hopefully we'll be back uh, at the same time uh, next week uh, to do it again.